Hi, welcome to Dell Technologies 5.5 Innovation Series, five questions in five minutes. I'm here today with Paul Poliwara, uh, a good friend of mine, and also the CTO ambassador for AI in the professional services team. Welcome. Thank you Thank so much, you for Paul. having me. Really appreciate it. So to kick things off, uh, AI, again, becoming the topic for the past year and a half, probably for the next few years as well. What do you see or how do you see the best way to build your AI factory? Right. So AI is not just a GPU, as you know, right? Um, and that's actually a very important thing to, to discuss, right? Um, <clears throat> when you're building your AI solution, um, of course, AI, the, the GPU accelerators uh, are at the heart of it, right? Uh, but you need to look at the other building blocks uh, that form your end-to-end -end solution, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you need to think about the servers uh, that can span out pretty fast, right? I need to think how you're going to be managing these as, a, um, you know, as an expanding solution out there, right? You need to look at the storage um, since the AI requires both the velocity um, and the volume of the data, right? right? Uh, so you need to look at the structured, unstructured data, mm -hmm. how you're going to be positioning them, how you're going to be placing them, how you're going to be working with them, right? Um, of course, the interconnects are, are important, right? Uh, the solution is going to be as fast as the slowest component, right? Uh, so neither of these uh, should be overlooked, right? And then there is other layers that are forming your, your solution, right? Uh, you need to think of, you need to make an architectural decision, really, uh, which operating system you're going to be choosing, right? Are you going to be going with Red Hat? You're going to be going Ubuntu? You're going open source uh, corporate? Uh, you need to look at the platforms uh, that are going to be shaping and, um, and, and building the AI, right? right. Uh, whether you're going to be doing a code-only uh, solution, you have um, the data scientists that can, uh, that can build Python code. Or you're thinking about the point-and-click solution, right? So that's where your AI ops uh, um, solutions or platforms uh, should be should be placed, right? And then on top of that, uh, probably the most important one uh, is your use cases, right? Um, where they're going to be really defining all of the layers underneath. Right. So if I think about it uh, one step further, from a technology point of view, I'm pretty sure <coughs> Dell Technologies is really good at delivering that AI factory. Uh, and we've done a lot of announcements about this at Dell Technologies World. The question I would have is, how do I drive adoption <clears throat> to leverage this technology in an organization? Because we can deploy it really well. Day zero, I'll deploy the whole thing with the yeah. software, everything. How do I get an organization to adopt it in their day-to-day -day activity? Good question. Um, you've probably heard that, that the most important model uh, is your business model. Right, uh, so you should start with a strategy, uh, and you should start with a business case. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you actually doing AI? Uh, why are you pursuing um, uh, the technology, uh, and what are your benefits? Right. Um, so you need to define the KPIs. You need to define the actual business use cases. Which problem are you trying to solve? Right, um, and that's one of the first questions that you should ask when it comes to the strategy. Uh, and then there is a lot of other architectural decisions that you will have to take, right? Um, right. In defining the overall organizational strategy. Um, once you have the strategy, uh, you need to look at the data, right? Uh, data is one of the most important pieces um, mm -hmm. of any AI solution, right? Um, we discussed the, uh, the volume and the velocity, right? right? Uh, but you need to look at also the, um, uh, the soft parts of the data, right? The, uh, the non-technical, right? The data governance, uh, how you're going to be protecting your data, how you're going to be consuming it, right? Um, which teams are going to be having access to which data sources, how it's going to be structured, how it's going to be exposed outside, um, how your AI systems and potentially traditional ML uh, are going to be consuming it, right? So if I want to look at it one step further, mm -hmm. so from an organization point of view, you mentioned a lot of things, data governance, uh, the soft part is critical Absolutely. other than the technical. Uh, which brings me to a question that everyone always asks me, is what are the main use cases we mm. should be looking at if I want to adopt uh, AI? So the conversations we are, we are part of these days are generally starting with the Gen AI, right? right. Uh, with, the, uh, with the spark <clears throat> of OpenAI, ChatGPT, right? This um, you know, helps with the marketing and uh, uh, those, are the, uh, those are the conversation starters, right? And when it comes to Gen AI, uh, we see a few use cases that are uh, that are on the sweet spot, right? We're looking at the chatbots, we're looking at document analysis, document summarization, question answering, and so on, right? Uh, 
However, um, since we're driving it from the consultative point of view, um, again, we're coming back to the, to the question before, right? Why? Why, do, why are you actually trying to do it? Uh, what, are, what, what problems, what business problems you're trying, uh, you're trying to solve, right? And that rekindles some of those traditional AI use cases, right? Where uh, machine learning use cases are, uh, are still out there, right? Predictive maintenance, predictive analytics, uh, you know, analysis of the, um, of the IoT sensor data, um, uh, traditional marketing analysis and and so on. Uh, I, I do agree with that. I see a lot of the conversation starts, I want the chat GPT model yeah. or a llama. Yeah. And then once we get into the details of financials, return on that investment, what to implement from a, a complexity point of view, we end up in the, what, funny enough, called traditional yeah. and, uh, AI, which is just machine learning. Nothing traditional about it, but it is an interesting aspect. And especially in the region, uh, my question would be, how are you seeing AI being adopted locally? We are pretty lucky living in the UAE, right? Where uh, the government is actually seeing the potential and is appointing, I believe it was 22 uh, AI officers sure. as, as part of the, uh, of, of the UAE government. Uh, we also have some initiatives that are, um, uh, you know, that, that are trickling down to the, uh, to the entire world, right? So we have two, two AI models that have been, uh, that have been built over here. Uh, we have Falcon, right? Uh, both the small Falcon and the big Falcon, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and they are, they're hitting the leaderboards when it comes to the, the hugging face, um, the hugging face charts. Uh, we have Jace, right? Uh, one of the first Arabic um, uh, business model, uh, <coughs> sorry, AI models. Um, what else? We can also see the um, uh, the hunger of the local organizations um, to uh, to adopt. Right, we're being invited into a lot of these meetings where uh, right. where we're being asked both on the educational part, right, to to, to show uh, the companies uh, how they can actually consume it and how they can drive uh, how they can drive the benefits. Uh, completely agree with you on that. I think the fact that uh, UAE made the investment to develop an Arabic LLM is key because, yeah. as we know, most LLMs are only in English. And this limits the use cases, especially in this region. I think by doing an Arabic LLM, this added a lot of value. And having a minister of AI in the country, also huge Absolutely. value as well, plus the chief AI officers. Um, when you look at all of this, I mean, now it's been a year and a half since everything exploded. Where do you see the next couple of years? So those are really difficult questions, right? It's um, the AI is such a dynamic um, subject um, that it's really difficult to predict where we're going. Uh, we can see two primary trends, right? Uh, the models are getting more and more um, intelligent, mm -hmm. right? Um, there is there is an increase in the size of the parameters. We can um, we can see where the models are starting to answer more and more uh, complex logical questions, right? Uh, but we see also the other trends, right? There is the the trend of getting the um, uh, the SLMs, right? The small lang language models uh, that are starting to be part of the edge, right? Where uh, the AI becomes part of your laptop. The AI becomes part of your of your of your mobile. Correct. I think uh, I think it will become more expansive in terms of touching every device. Similar to what happened with the internet, right? Internet came out. We had internet on your laptop, yeah. and the, or desktop, then laptop, and now mobile. Now even your watch. All these Absolutely. access points. I think the same thing will kind of happen with AI. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. That's five and five. See you next time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.